right? So in 1946, this piece of property was sold to United Artists. And United Artists hired a famous architect in San Francisco named Alexander Canton. And Mr. Canton was very well known for his unique style of architecture. So if you look at the, the, the floor that you're standing on, this is called terrazzo tile. And you can see all the different shapes in it and the different colors. And you're gonna find that that was carried into the theater. And you can tell a really well built building back then because it took the outside influence and also brought it to the inside. So there's lots of rounded things like the soffit here is a rounded, um, rounded face to the building. This ceiling above us, the original ceiling came down, so they just shored that up. It's not historic, uh, the way they prepared it, uh, but it at least it made it safe. Um, the, the terrazzo tile is a historic feature of the building. Um, you know, sadly, the, the fence had to be broken through it, but before the fence, people would come and you know, break it. And originally, the box office had glass walls, so this was all enclosed in glass, kind of like a bank when you go and there's a circle and a, you know where the money slides. Um, always, who worked in here was a woman, usually a, a, an older woman, because that's the kind of jobs that women had then before we were engineers and running for president, stuff like that. Um, and she was always like a bomb, yelling at people, pipe down, settle down. Because in those days, people just brought their kids to the theater for matinee and dropped them off. So, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds without a parent. That was just a sign of the times, right? That's, that's what people did. And so the theater would be full of kids. And we had some really good times in the theater. Um, so we're gonna go in. I'm gonna point out a lot of the historic stuff to you. I'm gonna ask you where you see yellow tape that says caution or there's like an X across the door. Please don't try to go beyond that. It's probably not safe, which is why it's blocked off. Anywhere I can take you, I will take you so you can get the full scoop of the theater, okay? So we're gonna head on in through that door. Bell, like a back bell or a bell or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we 
Uh, back in this far corner was the drinking fountain. Now the drinking fountain is also considered historic. And you can see the bones of it are still there, right? The shape of it. You can see how Mark Zeko that looks. That, where the opening is, had frosted glass there, and that was also backlit with neon lights. So this was a really groovy looking lobby, if you will. There were couches in here uh, for people to be able to sit and visit. On this wall here, behind this wall, which you can't see anything, there's a door outside. And that door takes you to the dumbwaiter. And I'm going to talk about that dumbwaiter once we get to the auditorium, but I want you to remember that. That's a historic feature right there, and one of the few left in this humble country. Um, we have, uh, here was the snack bar. Originally they had popcorn and candy and sodas and things like that. Um, in the 70s, a smoke kitchen was added so that they could accommodate and have other <coughs> burgers and, uh, you know, because uh, food service laws changed and you needed, you know, to actually like wash your hands and stuff like that. You know, later kids, you know, we played in the dirt. We ate dirt, we walked barefoot, and we were all fine. Now, you know, you can't do it. You have to have your hands on your We do have some artifacts here. Uh, this is a set of blueprints. There were some blueprints to the theater. But I want to point out a couple of things here. Back in the uh, 80s, some windows were left open, and pigeons took over the theater. And it became known as the Pigeon House. There were so many pigeons, <coughs> the poop was really bad in here. Pigeons and rats. And at one point, the vector control came in and said, this is all about being empty. At that point, all of the seats in the theater and the auditorium were removed. And they were all covered in poop. And it was a problem. So the seats were all like a horsehair, you know, with red velvet. I mean, they were beautiful, but they all had to go. All gone. I don't know what happened to them, but they're gone. The owner at that time was told you have X amount of days to get it. So I'm sure they just are actually gone. There were, uh, hold up on those seats right here. These are the, this is their, each seat had two of those little feet. They were uh, drilled in with cement. And the Lorenzo Theater Foundation came in and on hands and knees removed all of those. We were able to save this piece of carpet. This was the carpet throughout the theater. It was everywhere in there. So if the theater ever gets restored, we can have that match and you know, to have a same pattern. A couple of little artifacts here that we've been able to save, like a light fixture. This is the chimney in the neon. So, um, and if you need ice, sir, let me know. So, people. 
people left the world of out there and they entered the world of cinema when they came through these doors. For me, that was very special as a kid. You know, life was tough. Um, it was a way for me to leave my life out there, come in here, and <coughs> absorb myself into something else. Let me just tell you about that room that you all looked in. There were two pieces of equipment. One is uh, called a plenum chamber. That's the one that looks like the um, robot from Lost in Space, you know, Warning, Warning, Will Robinson. Um, that plenum chamber was a natural cooling system. There was no air conditioning in it. There still isn't. But the plenum chamber was designed to cool the building. <coughs> so it would pull in cool air from outside and push the air up into the auditorium. So under the seats, there were grates and the cool air would come up. Just like in some of the theaters in San Francisco still, <coughs> like, uh, the Golden Gate Theater, sometimes you might feel cool air around your feet. That's why they have a plenum chamber.
So now you drive down the street and someone comes up and you see this building, right? And you think, why is that building so Why can't we just get rid of it? Let's put something else there, something that's meaningful. This is why. This is why. These beautiful murals were painted by a famous Dutch muralist named Anthony Heinzberg. And he got his start by doing of the movie palaces owned by the Plantagenes family. He did about 700 theaters, which probably less than 100 are still in existence, if that. This is one of them. He used fluorescent paint. And you can see the detail when the black lights are on. You know, even the leaves here, mother of pearl. It's just no detail was left undone. But that, you can see the water damage. 